As you know, the internet's blowing up right now with this particular video clip about a UFC fighter climbing over the fence and jumping into the crowd. This is not good. This is apparently against the rules. We have a bully breakdown for you to really give you insight into what made this get so out of control and how we can talk to our kids about it so we could use a culturally uh, relevant event to talk about a social problem. With me, of course, with the bully breakdown is Jason Stanley Marshall. Jason, uh, what, why is this wrong? You know, WWF, which I know is totally different than the you know, UFC fighting, but you're allowed to have fights outside the ring. Why, why is this such a bad thing in a fighting league uh, to not have uh, aggression outside the octagon? Right, and, and there is that exact line. Now, uh, Khabib is entering into criminal charges, uh, and as well as others. So for something he was just doing, uh, within a matter of 30 seconds later, the same thing, punching somebody in the face, he goes from applause and being paid to do it to now criminal. Yeah, now, now the, so the first lesson we, we, we have to tell uh, students is uh, there is a time and place for us to express our aggression. So, it, you know, that's why dads always say, hey, if you really are mad at that team beating you, take it out on the field. They don't mean, you know, physically assault them on the soccer field, but prove it with a win. And, and technically, Khabib did dominate Connor in the ring. He did dominate him. He, uh, Khabib, or, uh, Connor tapped out, which made Khabib the undisputed champion. But in the moment, in the heat of the moment, with the blood flowing and 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 uh, kind of all the energy uh, bottled together, uh, someone outside of the ring provoked Khabib. Who was that? Yeah, it was actually uh, someone from Conor McGregor's team. Uh, one of his tri- the one that he was training with, uh, I believe, it was his Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach, the one who was helping uh, him in that direction. So we learned kind of by f- digging into this whole uh, thing that that Khabib is actually the weaker opponent, maybe not physically, but definitely psychologically because he allows words and insults to dominate him, to provoke him to a reactionary attack, which means, well, as uh, Connor was just quoted a few hours ago after the fight, we may have uh, lost the fight, but we won the battle. Those were his exact words. What did he mean by we won the battle? Well, right. So for for Connor, the the battle here is one psychologically. And now, two on the other side, although he lost, he's winning in the rating. I mean, so here's a champion who should be getting a belt in Khabib. And Connor now looks like the victim and is now being elevated in the minds of fans and everybody else in the sport. He got his purse. He got his money immediately. Khabib still doesn't have his money from the fight. The belt was given, but not even in the ring. They didn't even get to uh, put it on him in the ring and to be celebrated right there in front of that crowd. He had to be escorted out, getting stuff thrown on him. So he's losing equity, <laughs> you know, in the in that world. And here's Connor winning this little battle because he's also thinking, I'm sure now, what about a rematch? Uh, you know, you and I, we teach there's three types of aggression. The first is humor. The second is victimization. The third is dominance. And humor is like telling jokes at someone's expense. Victimization is when I'm hurt by you and I want to retaliate because I feel victimized. And dominance is really psychological dominance. I'm just trying to dominate. I guess it could be physical dominance, like in the ring, having you tap out. But uh, for uh, Connor, it was not just physical dominance to have his opponent tap out, but he wanted to have psychological dominance because he'd be more likely to have physical dominance if he could throw his uh, competitor off his game. So what types of aggression, based on those three, did you see here at play, or at least maybe even a combination of one or more? Definitely a combination. This is where it begins. Uh, So Connor is so great at utilizing humor uh, to be able to shift into that dominance. Right. And you, you, you bring that belt up on, on, on stage like, like it's a real belt. You're a phony, a fake. So he wants to have power over an opponent. And he knows that that starts before you even get in the ring. Khabib was good at staying, and it didn't appear like it was having uh, an impact on him. 
It looked like he was able to keep that composure and not allow Connor's words to get at him in one of the uh, uh, press conferences leading up to it. But obviously, as we noticed later on, uh, Khabib did feel victimized and hurt by Connor and wanted to let it out. Like, I don't understand how people can talk about I jump on the cage, you know? What about he talk about my religion? He talk about my country? He talk about my father? Well, it's very effective. It's a tool that people use to try to get you to uh, disobey the rules or to snap in anger. Yeah. The reason why Connor knew he could psychologically dominate Khabib is because he knew that Khabib had a dysfunctional thought pattern, a, yeah. a belief yeah. system. It's not people. I think it's media. Media a little bit change MMA. This is respect sport, you know. This is not trash talking sport. This is respect. So, like I told you before, guys, I want to change this game. I don't want people talk about like opponents, talk about his father, like like religion. You you cannot talk about religion. You cannot talk about nation. You know, guys, you cannot talk about this stuff. And you know, this is for me is very important. He he thought he could change the whole game or the UFC by demanding that there's zero tolerance for trash talking. He actually believed that. That's why Connor exploited that belief system. Now, we shouldn't have that belief system. Instead, and you notice it didn't work. If anything, he's getting more uh, of what he was hoping to get rid of. Uh, the very trash talking that he was hoping to put an end to is actually escalating and he's fueling it by, by his approach and demanding and believing that nobody can do that. Plus, it, it's called the, the paradox of aggression. Yeah. The harder I try to make you stop being mean and offensive, the harder it is to stop you. But the less I try, the easier it is to stop. The more I let you do it, the, more, the less you want to. Exactly. Because there's a payoff. They're in Vegas, and, and Connor played Khabib like a loose slot machine, pushing all kinds of buttons, and Khabib was paying out a jackpot of anger, so therefore Connor really is the big winner in Vegas. Wow, it's really sad. So when we try to talk to our kids about this, what's the lesson here, Jason? Well, so as I look at uh, how to apply that with, even with my own sons or myself and uh, students that I work with, uh, what we look at is it, particularly when we understand why. So why was this happening? Why is someone being mean to me? Why, uh, and is it because they're just trying to be funny and using humor to have dominance? So if that's the case, uh, uh, they can learn to. So what I do with my own sons is they try to dominate each other <laughs> by being making the other one embarrassed, laughing. Give us an example. And I've got the perfect scenarios with two boys, uh, even in a, a, a breakfast scenario. My one son, three bites left, looks over. My other son is a full bowl. He loves to look over and say, it's a race. Eat all three bites super fast. Look over and say, you lost, I won, and then the other one, it's not a race, it's not a race. Yes, it is, and you're a loser. I'm not a loser! And then he you know, wants to attack him. Uh, so I actually sat Jonathan down, my younger son, and said, okay, hey, let it be a race. So what? And let him win, you know? I said, uh, so here's what we're going to do. We actually role-played in heat scenarios because, uh, you know, I, I know just having it up here doesn't mean it's going to come out. So I've got to practice it so it goes in. Uh, so I, I tell my boys we practice in private so we can perform in public. So there we are. And I practice with Jonathan. To, uh, so we did the whole scenario. I won. It's a race. And Jonathan just calmly looks over and goes, great job, Jason. And then Jason goes, but I won and you lost. And he goes, I know. You're so fast. And Jason didn't know what to do. Right in that moment, I watched the power change. I watched Jonathan, who had the power to punch and even beat up his brother, keep it under control, meekness, right? Uh, keep that power under control and respond in a way that now he was the, the winner in that scenario. And Jason didn't know what to do with himself. Uh, and so that, that's what it, it, how you can now translate into sports and take that into other areas, but to remain calm and uh, not get upset and then instead respond with that kindness or, or a and way that you want to be treated. If has a hard time responding, you could simply reply, that's a good one. Ha, you should be a comedian. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Got me. You know, something like that. Because uh, some kids are not very articulate and they don't know how to respond to insults that right. are that psychologically dominating them. But if you 
if you prepare them with response techniques, like that's a good one. Ah, you should be a comedian. You're hilarious. Um, it'll it'll shut down the the jokester. Uh, yeah. So Sometimes we do how, instead of jumping the fence and attacking uh, your opponents, uh, sparring partners and and, and teammates. Uh, how would you have suggested Khabib ended the match? Right. So how could he re- or what, what would I have done? Uh, well, one, right, I would have shifted my belief. And then hopefully that belief drives me to a different. Meaning the, that- shift, the shift would be if he wants to make fun of my family, that's fine. That's fine. If he wants to make fun of my religion or the color of my skin or if he wants to call me a terrorist, there's nothing I can do to stop him. It's freedom of speech. Uh, he's just trying to get my goat or I, he's yeah. trying to get me to take the bait, fall for the trap. I'm not going to play that game. So that mindset, you would shift. And then in that, here's what that would look like. So there I am. I just because uh, I've already envisioned myself, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> beating Conor McGregor myself. You know, uh, we're close to the same weight class. So then there I am. I would be able to stand up. And even if I wanted to address or hear that, I might look give a little nod to, 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 to the one instigating. And instead I'd go back and I'd help Connor up and, and I'd give him a handshake and let him know, man, good battle. Dude, that was good. That would have been a PR gift, <laughs> right? Everyone would have said, what an incredible sport. He's talking all that trash to you. You not only legally beat him, but now you helped him up. You are the bigger man. That would have been huge for him and his family. Yeah, then what? Now everybody can talk about how I beat Connor instead of now how Connor's a victim and all of that and, and now how I'm such a bad guy. Instead, now I, by lowering myself in that way, I'm, I'm getting elevated and right where I need to be. They bring the belt in. Now I get my purse. I get the belt. And they're going, wow, now if we have a rematch, it's even greater. Or, man, where can we take this guy next? You know, uh, but yeah, now I come out the winner. Look look at Khabib. He's not getting paid. He's he might have the belt. Lose his visa. He might lose his visa. Uh, He he might have to do a rematch. So he he has the potential to lose. Um, Or not. And they don't even let him back in to fight. And now he doesn't even get that opportunity. And they strip him of the belt. And now he loses every not even a chance to have a good rematch. And according to his own words, he says his dad's going to smash him and beat him up when he gets home. I know my, my father's going to smash when I go home because I know he's going to smash me. It's lose, lose, lose all the way around for, for Khabib. It's all because he had this irrational belief system that no one has the right to make fun of my family, my faith, my country, or my friends. And because he had that irrational demand... It got into his head, and this champion fighter was the biggest loser this last weekend in Las Vegas. That's too bad, man.